Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge & Company. Carol Artigiani has a simple view. She thinks young students can concentrate and learn, and at the same time enjoy civics and new languages from all over the world. Global Kids, the organization she founded and directs, does just that. This organization really came out of all your experiences, but also out of your heart, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Welcome to my uh, program. Thank you. So tell us about Global Kids. How did you develop it and what is well, it? Well, Global Kids is addressing critical needs, I think, in our society. One is that we have a large population of young people who come from communities that have been traditionally excluded from the policy-making process and who do not feel like they have power to make any change in their own lives and in the world. So. One of the things that we feel very strongly about is engaging young people from those communities and discovering really what their own assets are, including the fact that many are from all over the world and speak other languages, but also that they are very bright and creative and energetic. And if they have concerns, that to learn that there are ways in which they can address those concerns. So it's about really helping them understand the complexity of issues that they are facing and then helping them to create strategies and act on those strategies to address those issues. And we're not just talking about issues in their own communities, but all over the world. So in a way, it's teaching them civics that I miss so much in the public school system, right? I, in is, a way, yeah. I think the absence of civic education is a great tragedy yeah. in our country and we're not standing up in front of a group of students and teaching them how a bill becomes a law but they may be very interested in issues say around the environment in their in their community um, so what do they have to do they have to learn how to decisions it. are made yeah. and they might go to speak with the city council or they might speak to the community board and they have to learn that how to be advocates. Um, it's a little bit more complicated if they're talking about the tragedy in Darfur, but it's not different. It's simply that now we're talking about foreign policy. And they're learning that if young people in all parts of the world suffer, maybe they're not exactly the same, but they have many of the same problems, whether they're poverty, health problems, access to health care, violence. It might be war in Sudan, mm -hmm. but it could be violence in your own community. And so it's really a way of thinking about these issues and what are the underlying causes and what is it that an individual citizen can do about it? You know, we have a, a, a citizenry that feels like it's somebody the else's problem. apathy that we have. You think that apathy comes from a lack of knowledge, how you make the change? I certainly think that's yeah. a lot of it, and it's a lack of experience. Right. So um, I'm not sure. I always like, you know, we can become nostalgic about the past. The old time. But um, I also think that one of the issues is that things are so overwhelming. There's not a day that goes by when a young person's not hearing about Global global climate change. Oh my God! You know yeah. we're going to have floods all over right. New York City, or uh, terrorist attacks. I mean, this it's a it's a world that's much more difficult to comprehend. And with oil spills in the Gulf that, uh, and Katrina, there's this These feeling are all like you know, overwhelming yeah, things. they're overwhelming. So, uh, what I love about Global Kids is that they and my staff. I give them all the credit, not myself. <laughs> But they really help young people look at the issue and then really think about what is it they can do. And very often, what they do is educate others and really spread the word that you have the right and the responsibility to be informed, but that you can participate. So mm -hmm. say with the Darfur situation, which they've done a lot of work on, um, we happen to have a staff member who's from Sudan, so that is very helpful. And she has made connections for them in these uh, refugee camps. And so they are sending letters. They're actually, they're, they're letting the, the young people know in Darfur that young people in New York are educating American citizens 
about the need for the, for the United States to take this problem very seriously. And it's also engendering, I mean, it's not only empowering people, but it's also engendering a, a tradition, it seems to me, of concern for other people and Absolutely. for the world that they're living in. That seems what's also missing in this world. Well, I, you know, I think that young people, I, I started Global Kids essentially by going around and asking young people, what is it you want to learn and how do you want to learn it? You were a teacher. I was once a teacher and I was a historian. I was a stay-at-home mom. I have a whole lot of careers. And you were a foreign policy. I was. I was at the Foreign what? Policy Association when I started uh -huh. Global Kids. Um, but I, I found right off the bat that when they were asked, if I went around and I said, would you like to learn about what's going on in the world? They said, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And so early in those, when I first started Global Kids, we were asking the same questions. You know, what is it that you care about? And what did they say? Racism, for example, yeah. and violence. Well, um, what I was doing, because I was trying to get them to think globally, is I got a bunch of South Africans who were living in New York, and they came and spoke to our students, um, our students. I mean, these are not anybody. I, could, I didn't have an organization. I was just testing this. Were you and testing it in a school? Or no, just outside? I had my, both. You just, I mean, you just I picked just, up some kids yeah. <laughs> and put them and, together. Um, ultimately, I got 9X to give me some money so uh -huh. I could go to Washington Irving High School. But um, they met with these South Africans who were actively trying to overturn apartheid. They were black, they were, quote, colored, and they were white. So they met young people who, who were activists themselves. They talked about the, the impact of racism in their own country, and it actually helped our, our own New York students mm. think differently about the racism in their own experience. I mean, it almost like opened up their minds and their hearts to a different... A, a different understanding. I mean, it's not just that everybody hates each other, it's also that they just didn't know each mm -hmm. other. And I think youth have a natural tendency to be empathetic. And they just don't have... It doesn't get developed. It doesn't happen. So yeah. when we were having meetings like that, and I had, I remember having another group of people from the Middle East, and one was from Libya, and one was from Israel, with one was from Syria. It's hilarious, you know, <laughs> all in the same room. And um, they were talking about, I think it was the war in Lebanon was still going mm -hmm. on. And, um, you know, a girl in the, it, who was sitting in the room just raised her hand and said, I'm from Lebanon, and I want to tell you what my experience is. So all of a sudden, these youth are sharing their own experiences with each other. and. You know, this is a girl who probably sat in the classroom with others mm, and nobody never. ever, ever heard about it. So, um, but one of the things that I always had in mind with this, so it's not just teaching civics and not just teaching informed participation, it's also a way of encouraging youth to, be, to see the value of school and education. So there is really a little underlying issue here that we are always thinking about, and that is keeping kids in school, con convincing them that they should work hard, that they have the capabilities, even if they've been told that they don't have the capability to go to college, but they start to see themselves. They've, they've read the book now. They've mm. learned how to do research. They've learned how to create a lesson plan and teach a lesson on a very critical issue. It could be on nuclear proliferation. It could be on sex trafficking. They've picked the issue. They had to learn it. They've educated others. And all of a sudden, they're thinking, hmm, I think school's good, you know? And if I really want to make a difference, I need an education. So how does this take form? You go into some schools. Mm -hmm. How many schools are you involved in? Quite this past year, we were in 10 all the time. And then Ten public sometimes, schools. Yes. Sometimes we, for shorter terms, we go to other schools, but we had 10. And then do the, the students in that school come to your headquarters, your office? We go to their schools, and they also can come to our office. So we, we operate a program every Friday afternoon for anybody who wants to come. They don't have to be from schools that we participate oh, in. Oh, really? It's open to so anybody? It's open to anybody. 
and we call that the citywide program. And, but at the schools where we work for, say, Fordham School of the Arts, um, Westside High School, there's a whole mm -hmm. list. Um, my staff is there for usually four days a week. And they're there during the day and they're after school. So they are doing a range of things that nurture these kids that who may have once been labeled at risk of dropping out of school. And so they call their parents if they're not coming to school. They'll go home. They'll make a home visit. Um, they look at their grades. There's a, there's a whole other side of this that, that is very important, and that's to make them go really? from grade yeah. to grade right. and graduate. And um, no, however, we're not tutoring. We're not an yeah. academic, you know, in a traditional right. sense, not an academic program. So you're teaching them skills. We're teaching them content and skills, skills. critical thinking, leadership, communication. And out of that, we're getting a 90 to 95 percent high school graduation rate. And very often, these are students coming from schools with a 50 percent graduation rate. So it's, um, it's very rewarding it to see. It must be, yeah. And then, you know, we meet our alums off and on, and <laughs> um, we're, we see what they're doing. And what one of the things I had in mind early when I was doing starting Global Kids was that I thought it would be a really valuable for the conduct of foreign policy if we had more diversity um, mm -hmm. in our foreign policy elite. Mm -hmm. After all, um, True. <laughs> we have people who come from all over the world who can understand the cultures of the countries we're trying to deal with. And so we have many of our students now not only graduating from high school, they're going to college, and they're studying international affairs. So great. So it's very exciting. And you have affiliations with different organizations. I mean, you do other activities other than this. Tell us some of them. Well, we have the, foreign uh, the, the council. So we have partnerships which we feel are very important to enrich the programs that we're offering. And um, I'd say one of the value, most valued ones is uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, which is probably the world's most eminent think mm -hmm. tank in yes. international affairs. And for about 15 years, we've been bringing our students there for monthly roundtables on a variety of issues. It depends on what the, who the speaker is. but. There'll be a presentation. And these and are students from the schools? or are these students others? from our schools. But are there other students from other schools that come to your program? Only Global Kids. I mean, No, they, I mean, do they come to Global Kids? Yes. They, a, 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 a student doesn't have to be at a school that you're Ex in to come exactly. to Global Kids. That's what I mean. Exactly. Yes. So All right. if, but, you know, we, we'd limit the number. So it mm -hmm. might be 20 to 25 mm -hmm. who would do this because, mm -hmm. after all, you're not going to have 700 right. students sitting around a table. But, um, but they will then have this round table. There will be a presentation. Uh, this year, an example was a presentation by um, the CIA fellow, um, because the council every year has a CIA person who comes and spends a year. And um, she gave a talk about her work as an analyst, in, and, on her, and her specialty was Iraq and um, Afghanistan. Um, they've heard from this, the council's press fellow this year who lived for five years in Afghanistan and had a very particular perspective that was unusual for, and our kids gotten a little, little bit of a <laughs> conversation about whether they agreed with her. Um, she felt we should stay in Afghanistan and <laughs> they were not sure. But one of the things we're trying to show them is what other people think is, is worth hearing, even if you don't agree mm -hmm. with it. So, and then in the summer, for uh, the sixth summer now, we will be having an institute at the council that will go for three weeks. That's great. And it's every day, nine to five, and these youth will be looking at U.S. foreign policy, what should be the role of the U.S. in the world. They'll look at things like multilateralism versus unilateralism, genocide. I mean, you name the issue that will probably be on the table. But... It's a wonderful thing, but the whole point of almost everything Global Kids does is that every youth who has this opportunity has to come up with a project so that he or she can bring this back to her or his community. 
Sometimes they'll do a project, it's a workshop. Sometimes they will do a screening of the film that really touched them, and then they will do a presentation and bring in speakers. They might do it at their churches, they do it at school, they community centers, but that's an obligation that they have for having the opportunity to so do that's this. that's something. And then you have a big youth conference. We have an amazing youth conference. We've had 21 now. Yeah. And they are completely run by our students. The student planning committee starts in the fall to come up, and they have often lots of arguments about what is going to be the theme. Um, and so when they finally come around to what the overall theme is, then they come up with topics within that theme, say for global health. It might be around you know, HIV AIDS in Africa, it could be access to health care in, in the United States. Um, then they have to do research. And they do the research to, it has to be good enough that when they're running a workshop at that conference, that they Amen. feel confident that they know what they're talking how, about. How large is your planning group? The planning group is about 25. And then we have those, that 25 will, will create Branch, all yeah. the workshops. And then we'll have about 60 global kids who facilitate. Now, so, let's just, I just want to get one thing, understand one thing. There are global kids who come from the schools, mm -hmm. but then there are other global kids who've heard about the program. Well, they're all school. They're all students. They are yeah, all they're all high school, students, high school students. But yeah. they don't have to be attending the schools you're no. you're in. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. No, that's right. So <laughs> I want your listeners to know that yeah. all of their teenagers are welcome to be part right. of Global Kids. And Do they just come and apply, or is there? You a know, um, it's very easy to become involved by simply picking up the phone actually or sending an email and saying, you know, if it's your, if a parent saying, I really yeah. like my child to be part of this and somebody That's will great. get back to them. And in the summer, it's a little less active, but yeah. um, once school starts, we're very, very active. We, this, the, this citywide program gets going again. So, um, and they, you know, it's voluntary. You don't have to sign a contract. Um, which, of course, you know, yeah. some organizations do, do require yeah. that. And you have to, you don't have to apply. You don't have to be brilliant. You don't even have to know anything you about should, you world affairs. You could just go on a Friday and see what the discussion yes. is about. and what happens is that the kids have fun. Mm. My staff is fantastic. Yeah, tell us, tell us about the staff. Well, they are, um, they are certainly representative of the communities from which we work in, in the sense of their ethnicity, their backgrounds. Um, we have people who come from other countries who are working for us, and we have people in, you know, from all over the U.S. You? We are pretty well known now, so, so I can great. say that yeah. when we put an ad for a job, we are inundated with requests. And, um, but our staff, 100% across the board has to have at least a college degree. They have to have demonstrated that they are interested in youth and, and are really concerned about what's going on in the world. Nobody knows everything, and so that's really not yeah, right. an expectation. Um, but it, they need to be energetic and lively, committed, and, and they have and organizing love. skills, right? And Absolutely. creative and everything. Yes, and I know, was I was just so overwhelmed when I came to visit. The first place, the place is physically so attractive, but just seeing all the different people there and from where they were and listening to the ideas and having it so close to my heart that I just, I just was overwhelmed by yeah, it. Yeah, well, it's, I feel the I wish same my way. kids were still in high school <laughs> so I they know. could go. Yeah. Now, you're using the internet very much. Yes, we are. Tell it. Let's well, we it. were a pioneer, really, in youth-produced digital media. We were, um, I, you know, it's, it, it, I'm not a geek in any yeah. way, um, but I felt that when I was starting Global Kids, that if we, were, if we were really preparing young people for a global society, they needed to know about technology. Little, I mean, how did I know what technology yeah, right. was? And in <laughs> 1989, 1990, it was a pretty Early simple thing. thing. Yeah. But I had in my, I was just determined that we were going to figure this out. And um, ultimately, we were ab able to get some money to hire someone who had a lot of experience. And um, we ended up with um, 
a whole staff of people who created what we call our online leadership program. And the whole point of that is to take our youth development, global education, and civic engagement approach into an online environment. So we, we had, a, early on, we had a program called News Crew. And we, it was a partnership with PBS and the News Hour. And we had kids from all over the world who were commenting on what, was, what the issues were on the news hour. Mm. And that was a simple thing, you know. Then came things like digital games. And we got a wonderful grant from Microsoft to uh, experiment with having young people create their own games. And it was, it's gotten easier to do this, just like everything else. But in the, when we were first doing this, there was no software. So um, they came up with what the theme was going to be, and of course, that was not easy, but they chose Haiti. And I said, Haiti, a game? You know, this is... <laughs> this is a little no, serious. This is very serious. And, but the point of the game was to demonstrate how poverty is an obstacle to education. They had to do all the research on Haiti, and then we had, you know, fact checkers who would make sure that they weren't you know, saying things that weren't true. A lot of our students are from Haiti, so I, you know, it was a very mm. natural thing. This is six, seven years ago. So, mm. and the whole point of the game is you have a family, you get a tiny bit of money, and you want your children to be educated. And I'll tell you, it is not easy. And uh, that is the point. It, you know, people think if you work hard, you can get, you can get, you can move up the ladder. <laughs> Bad things happen to people who are very poor, and that's really what the message of this game is. So, and then we, get, we went into Second Life and Virtual Worlds, and we created a whole, we had islands all over Second Life, and we were running workshops on, <laughs> we worked with the Holocaust Museum, we worked with the ICC, um, where our kids were educating others and having little gatherings in which they were talking about these, yeah. you know, serious issues. So. Um, and now we created a curriculum in um, and how to use virtual worlds. So it's being used all over the world um, by educators. We also are now training librarians and youth workers and other teachers on how they can integrate games into their curriculum. Now how do you finance all this? That's <laughs> a good question. Yeah, uh, it's the toughest part. You know, everyone thinks we're doing great work, yeah. and yet the reality is that there's not a lot of money right now. So it, we know there's money out there, but we're trying, always trying. And you know, I have to say, I've never felt comfortable. We've never had a lot of money. So it's not like, um, you know, yeah. we lived, lived in the lap of luxury, so we've been through challenges before, and I'm sure we'll get through this one. But we have um, always been, we've had, had wonderful relationships with the city, and so we've been able to get contracts for dropout prevention and for after-school program. We get foundation grants, and we have individuals who support us. So. And some corporations. And some corporations. The, the project. So you're always yeah. writing, you're writing um, We're proposals. We're always, yes. <laughs> right. Your website is, is a terrific website. It's just called globalkids.org, right? And people can really explore the whole thing and actually join in some of the activities or not? It, it's not so much of an interactive, interactive that thing. way. But, you know, they can get involved on our online stuff. So mm -hmm. um, if they are really interested in the online programming, um, they, can, they should go straight to, the, um, to that part of our website. I went to YouTube the other day. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw some of the things that the, that yeah. they, the, the kids produced and things, it, stuff like that, right? It's amazing, it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, last year they created a virtual video. That means that it's a video made, um, it's animated, and the people in it are avatars. It's very complicated. And the idea of that video was to educate the world about what happens to a girl who's been tricked into, into coming into this country from Mexico and ending up uh, in a brothel. 
it's very sad. It's very I know moving. it was really sad. Yeah, and it's so, but, and that's how the students felt about it. And they, I'm, I mean, they take it so seriously that they, they care so much that they really want others to know that this is going on in their own country. And I'm happy to say, you know, I, I, one can never say that your particular youth have had an impact, but it is good to hear our mayor and um, our president talking about it, these issues, which they never used to talk about before. And I think it is because the public. Mm -hmm. Everything every you can overall, do to increase the yeah, awareness. Yeah. And it must also be exceedingly gratifying for you to have this, this holistic concept, of putting all your experience together uh, and, and seeing these kids flourish. I mean, it has to be. It's, it's good. <laughs> Yeah, and you it's have good. and you have people who come back and you see what they're doing. Yes, and we have three Global Kids alum who work for us, and we've always had some who are working for us, and we also have them on our board. Um, our founding board was actually three students and me <laughs> and a couple of my friends, but um, I think we might be the first organization that had youth on the board from the very beginning. So now this is it was a great you know, impact, and, and it's. You know, it's an education for them, but it's very important to keep our board honest about, you know, what they think we should be doing. And um, it's the kind of thing that very, you know, very few young people have. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. We've come to the end of our half hour. So I hope that anybody, everybody who's watching who has a child in high school goes to the website globalkids.org and encourages, encourages their children to come down because it is a wonderful place. What's your address? It's 137 East 25th Street, second floor, right off of Lexington Avenue. It's very convenient. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.